this is the fourth episode of this series um, and today I'll be talking about the Stanley number four. This Stanley number four is a post-war uh, version of it. That means it was produced after World War II. In this case, I have already modified this plane in order to get it working. I will cover in this video the items that have gone seen, gone through and upgraded. And first of all, this is sole. In this case, the sole, as it is, was not that flat. Now bear in mind, this is a 50 USD dollar plane. Well, in terms of Malaysian ringgit, about 200 ringgit. But then again, uh, back to this plane. This sole was not flat. I had to lap it down. Lapping is a process whereby we attach a long strip of sandpaper to a board in this case and we will just move it over and over again this hand plane with minimal pressure to level down this sole. Now that being said the sole is taken care of the next item is to determine the squareness of the edge. In this case, what I generally do is the following is to take up this plane and mark it here. As you can see, I'm not sure whether it appears on the camera, there is some light coming through here. So, this plane, among new other Stanley planes or even post uh, pre war, is actually on the edges and now what that limits us is um, metering sorry shooting I have built this board for my other hand planes to, uh, to do shooting but because of the nature of the side of this plane I'm able to use this board for shooting um, so in this case it is possible very much to to square this edge but the problem is as you can see the walls here are pretty thin um, yes I could easily build a jig run some sort of sanding machine on, onto the sides and level it down that being said um, this plane Due to this thinness of the wall, I will not try to attempt it. On the more expensive hand planes like Lee Nelson or Veritas from Lee Valley, the plane is of higher quality build. And I'm very sure when you do the square test, 99% to 99.9 is square. So, that's one issue you will probably have with this plane and you can't really do shooting on using the uh, shooting board so <laughs> this is the downfall one of the serious downfall of this hand plane that being said um, the next item I will talk about is a chip breaker the chip breaker was quite funny I had to use to upgrade the uh, the normal Stanley chipper, chip breaker to a heavier and a more rigid version of the uh, of the current alternatives out there. So one of them is that I got Veritas chip breaker. The Veritas chip breaker works really well with this with this plane itself. So one of the things I'd like to note is that because of its thickness, it will probably want it. If I'm right. The chip breaker itself it is able to tighten down the blade without flexing if we uh, seen the uh, original Stanley chip breaker that chip breaker tends to flex so when we tighten down the nut here that chip breaker can easily slide off and move off to the edge damaging the blade edge again, over and over again so that's something I realized there is a very serious flaw with the uh, with the standard chip breaker. Yes, for the standard chip breaker, we can uh, strengthen the uh, the chip breaker through hammer and so whatever means. 
but I decided to go to buy the alternative one of the alternatives out there which is a Stanley chip breaker I highly recommend this chip breaker as one of your major upgrades as it is I however if you talk about the blade the blade itself was quite it's actually pretty reasonable it's cheap it doesn't last as long as A2 steel but for crying out loud at this current price you could probably buy three three blades of this compared to one A2 steel um, probably in a day you'll probably sharpen it once unlike A2 steel it'll probably last you the complete day with hardwood just like Rizap or even Chungang now this is one of the local hardwoods it, it is reasonable on this type of wood it was probably medium medium hardness I can't say what kind of wood this is hmm. anyway on pure result or ching out aka the iron wood <laughs> this interlocking ring <laughs> this iron doesn't work out well I, I it, it doesn't even well, it cuts through for the first few tries. After that, it just fails. That's when you probably need A2 steel or PMV11 steel as it is. So, that being said, for most woods, the blade works. And I'm using this plane most of the time on medium and to, to soft wood. Hardly any result. And this result is full of knots in it. Anyway, any blade out there would really diminish. So that covers the chip breaker and the blade and finally the toe and the knob. The toe and the knob is an interesting design. It was made of plastic. So what I got is that I ordered it online. I will give you the link on the website in the description. And what I talk about is that the reason why I spent so much money to upgrade this tool is because when I start to plane down and hold this probably it is due to my tight grip of, of bad habits is that when I move the plane over um, the plastic tends to, to cause me pain in the palms probably the rubbing is too hard as it is so in this case a wooden version would suffice um, one thing about the post one the pre-war is that I, from what I understand is that the pre-war it's practically made of wood. The leaf is mahogany in this case, but this version, that is, this this toe and knob is made of um, Bolivian rosewood, if I recall correctly. So it's a good recommendation to upgrade your toe and knob if you are holding your plane like me and you're getting very hard rubs on it, trying to pull you down. And that's when you don't feel great after the head with your hands I highly suggest that you upgrade your tool and knob if you're using a post-war plane like mine it was basically plastic the, uh, surprisingly overall this plane as you can see works very well um, so those are the major upgrades and things I do did when I got this hand plate. Some you could omit, some you could not. So in summary, the sole is not flat, most likely. So that's the way that, that's when you need to lap it down. Two is the side is not square, most likely again. Um, but if it so happens that if you manage to get a post-war or pre-war and you test the hand plane before you bought it by all means try to get a side that is square probably it will take time to find this 3. Chip breaker highly recommend in any forms of the hand plane whether it's post-war or pre-war to upgrade the chip breaker chip breaker gives you stability, rigidity rigidness to the, to the iron itself Three, the blade depends on the type of wood that you will work on. And four is the toe and knob. If you are if you're having pain with your arms, your palms as it is, I would suggest highly you upgrade this to a wooden version. 
may not necessarily be Bolivian rosewood, but as long as wood. <laughs> um, so that covers basically the five items that I did for uh, Stanley number four. I believe these items also is very much applicable to other Stanley hand planes, even record or even craftsmen. So these are items that you will probably need to be aware of. Um, this tutorial is not to be a, a very detailed process, but just a step down process of what you generally will need to do. So this is how the plane performs now. It is no any difference compared to the cut now. The um, the shaving is still very thin, very controllable. But in this case, the plane is a push instead of a pull, so one has to be aware of that. So this ends this episode as it is, and I highly recommend that you at least upgrade the chip breaker at the end uh, and let down the sole of the plane. So that's for now, as it is.